Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. There was definitely no cry, you know, like he was hurt. But, you know, you never know if maybe at that point it was already over. A Kentucky politician's wife is asking for your help. Tracking down her dog will tell you what she thinks happened to him coming up. The president is signing memoranda today affecting thousands of people who live and work in Kentucky. Will it help or hurt them? And we use them all the time to connect with friends and family. Next, we'll tell you how some hackers are gaining access to your personal information and how to keep yourself safe. WKYT News at 6 starts now. Good evening on this Friday. It's a way of connecting with people around the world, and it's simple. Just turn on your web camera, and you can talk to anyone from anywhere. But strangers could do the same if you're not careful. A Russian website has gained access to thousands of homes streaming live images, and you may not even know it's happening. And one of those victims lives right here in Lexington. In our top story at 6, WKYT's Victor Puente shows us how you can make sure you don't become a victim. It's made headlines across the world. Thousands of webcams broadcasting through a Russian website, and the users are completely unaware. It's really, really shocking being able to see into people's bedrooms, into gyms, into people's workspaces. I don't think anyone would expect that that could actually happen. When we sifted through those feeds, we found one here in Lexington. The website also included location coordinates, and the woman at the address said the picture on the feed was from her home, she didn't want to go on camera. The administrator of the site told media outlets the goal was to raise awareness of security weaknesses. They gained access to the cameras because they were still set to the default passwords. Former Lexington detective Don Evans says preventing these type of intrusions is simple. It's something all of us are guilty of, not changing our password, not making a strong enough password. In most cases, that seems to shut these hackers out. Now that that point has been made, the website may be finished. Earlier today, that website went from this with pictures of those video feeds to this, a notice of a programmer looking for a job. I emailed the administrator, and they said it was a permanent change, and they were tired of being a, quote, Russian hacker. Evans says this incident is a reminder to keep your electronics secure, but it shouldn't scare you from using them in the first place, since those cameras can be useful for security and aren't likely to be used by criminals. It's creepy. More than anything, to know that someone can hack in and, and, and see your house, you know, or what's going on. But most burglars are still doing it, unfortunately, the old fashioned way. They're kicking in the back door and, and, and going in when people aren't at home. We searched cities surrounding Fayette County to see if other cameras had been accessed, but couldn't find any. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. The United Kingdom was in the process of trying to get that website shut down. We did some research for you to find some ways to protect your web camera from being hacked. Experts say the most important thing is to change your password. Cameras come with a default password, but experts say you need to change it to something stronger that only you will know. They also say if possible, disconnect your camera when you're not using it. But if your camera is built into your computer, experts say simply putting tape over it when you don't want it to be seen can be helped. Lexington police are trying to figure out who broke into several Lexington businesses overnight. Police say that someone broke into China King and Nail Salon on Bryan Station Road. Another break in happened just hours later at My Pequena Hacienda at the corner of Lansdowne and Reynolds Road. Police say the burglar stole cash from the restaurant's registers and the whole thing was caught on tape. The owner says he can't believe someone would do this. These are people, you know, you never understand the people. Who are I don't want to go to work anymore. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Now, police say the burglars took cash from the China King. They don't think anything was taken from the nail salon. We have an update tonight about a teenager hit by a car in Lexington last week. Family members say 14 year old Mason Wade is showing signs of improvement and could even be out of the hospital soon. Last week, Wade was trying to walk across Man of War Boulevard with his friends when a car hit him. Cruz rushed the eighth grader to UK hospital with life threatening injuries. He suffered facial and pelvic fractures and bleeding to his brain. Wade's mother says hopefully tomorrow will be his last day at UK before he is transferred to Cardinal Hill. President Obama says he will act without Congress on immigration reform, but Kentucky Senator Rand Paul calls that move lawless. 
He's been very vocal about his disagreements with President Obama. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy talked with Senator Paul today, as well as a leader in Lexington's Hispanic community, about what's next for the country's undocumented workers. When you own a business like Freddy Peralta, you think about long-term investments in your community, like buying a car, building a home. And Peralta says all those decisions are ones many undocumented workers may now be able to make. Instead of sending, uh, sending money back to, to their country, they're going to be thinking investing the money right here in the local economy. President Obama's plan will allow about 5 million undocumented immigrants to apply for three-year visas to stay in the U.S. A recent study suggests that will impact around 3,500 people in Kentucky. We are in a horse country, and you can see the construction, you can see the service, the restaurants, you can see the, all that. There is a heavy participation uh, of workers that are still are without documentation. Senator Paul agrees with leaders here in Lexington in the Hispanic community. Immigration policies must change. I think we should expand work visas. I think that if you talk to farmers in Kentucky, most of them would have like more work visas, not less. What he disagrees with the president about is the way in which he enacted reforms. Our founding fathers wanted to separate power. We want the Congress to legislate and the president to execute the legislation. Peralta, who moved to Kentucky from the Dominican Republic almost 30 years ago, believes the president's current immigration reform will keep money in the Commonwealth in Lexington. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. And under the president's new memorandum, undocumented immigrants applying for a work permit, permit must pass a background check. Today wraps up the second day of interviews in the search for an interim superintendent for Fayette County Public Schools. Yesterday, school leaders interviewed former Danville Independent School Superintendent Carmen Coleman. Today, they interviewed longtime educator Marlene Helm and Ronald Sonny Fentress. Fentress has spent 42 years working as an educator and has most recently served as the interim superintendent in Muhlenberg County. Well, this all comes after Superintendent Tom Shelton announced his plans to resign at the end of December. The board hopes to hire an interim superintendent while they search for Shelton's permanent replacement. Looks like we are finally getting a small break from this Arctic blast, and temperatures are going to start warming up this weekend. So, how long will that last? It's about time, Chris Bailey. Glad to see that maybe Saturday will be pretty nice. What do you think? Yes, yeah, Saturday looks uh, very good right now. So, for folks who are planning to do something outside, a little yard work, Work. Still some uh, leaves to take care of, or maybe get at the Christmas and holiday lights out. Do it to it, my friends. Take a look at how we're starting out the weekend. Temperatures quickly dropping into the low 30s now into much of central and northern Kentucky. 29 Covington, yet we're upper 30s across parts of the south central sections of the state. Wind's not a big, big player out there as of right now. So wind chills basically going to be exactly what your temperature is showing. Life first alert defender, nothing across central and eastern Kentucky. Not too far away from us, though. Clouds are increasing from Nashville over toward Bowling Green. A couple of those scattered showers, and they're aimed toward central and eastern Kentucky. And they've got some buddies with them back to the southwest from the Ozarks into parts of Texas and Louisiana. Focus of the forecast is on the weekend and how Old Man Winter decides to take a little trip out of Kentucky for a change. It's a good thing if you need some mild weather. The problem with that, guys, is that he's only going away for the weekend. I'll have another round of some winter showing up in the seven-day outlook just in time, maybe for Thanksgiving when I come back in just a few minutes. A Lexington woman is asking for your help searching for her dog. Kentucky House Speaker Greg Stumbo's wife, Mary Karen, says she spotted a coyote in the Tuscany neighborhood a couple of days ago when she let her little Yorkie outside. She says she looked away for a second, and when she turned around, he was gone. She suspects a coyote took little Max. But in a story that's new at 6, WKYT's Mike Linden tells us this is not the first time coyotes have been spotted in Lexington. At around 8.30 Wednesday night, Mary Stumbo let her dog Max into the backyard. After hearing Max bark, she looked outside, could no longer see Max, but did see a pair of glowing eyes staring back at her. Mary Stumbo lives in the Tuscany neighborhood of Lexington, where animal control officials have set up coyote traps before. Stumbo says she saw a coyote the night Max went missing. I yelled his name, and the, the eyes went from about 12 inches up to about three and a half feet. So I knew instantly that it was a coyote. Stumbo and family friends have looked under porches and beyond the fence line, but haven't found Max. There was definitely 
no cry, you know, like he was hurt. But, you know, you never know if maybe at that point it was already over for him. They're very destructive. Uh, rabbits, quail, uh, any kind of game. And now as they've come in, as, as they've gotten more familiar with residential areas, uh, cats and dogs are in danger. According to Fish and Wildlife officials, coyotes close to neighborhoods are most likely looking for food this time of year. And if you come across one, to make a lot of noise to scare it away. As of Friday afternoon, Max has not been found. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. If you live in or around the Tuscany neighborhood and have seen Max recently, go to our website, WKYT.com, to connect with the Stumbos. Coming off a stellar performance, what a great performance against Kansas on Tuesday night. The Cats will be back on the court in less than an hour to take on the Boston Terriers. And WKYT's Rob Bromley joins us now from Wildcat Central with a preview of tonight's game. And Rob, the Cats have won their first three games of the regular season. And tonight, maybe we'll add a fourth, you think? Big favorites here tonight. And I tell you, Amber and Sam, things really buzzing here at Wildcat Central. You can tell that these fans are excited about this basketball team. Back on the home court tonight against Boston U, and the Terriers come in with a one and one record. Now, the platoon system works. At least it is here in the early season with that stunning performance against Kansas. The players aren't getting as many minutes, but they're winning big, and they are not complaining. Winning like that, that, that's the ultimate goal in, 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 in basketball, period. So just to, just to get a big win like that against a great team like that, um, it just shows a lot about our team and, and even shows a lot about the new guys, how they stepped up and played. Anybody can see how good you are in 20 minutes just like they can in 35 minutes. It's not like you can't see the talent or you can't see how good you are. 7 o'clock tip-off for the game tonight uh, in Rupp Arena against Boston University. Coming up in about 10 minutes in sports, we'll hear a little more from UK great Dan Issel. He gives us his take on Willie Cauley-Stein and a freshman Carl Anthony Towns. For now, that's it from here at Wildcat Central. Sam Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. Two games in three nights for the Cats. They play Montana State on Sunday. Some changes are coming to the federal courthouse in downtown Lexington. In just a few minutes, we'll tell you what crews will be adding and when construction is expected to start.